creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I upload a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today, I am bringing to you a new series that I am adding to the content of my channel that I am so excited about because it is a series that has the gift that just keeps on giving when it comes to DIYs. What do I mean by that? The new series that I'm bringing to you is using what Dollar Tree is calling these flagpoles that you can get in the garden section. This is not a flagpole. This is a flag stick, or I'm going to better yet call it a banner hanger. And these are such a fun little piece because there are endless DIYs that can be done with them in regards to making banners. I thought that it would be fun to make banners for these for each of the seasons, each of the holidays, or a just because banner, because why not? Those are fun. Maybe it's not a specific season, or maybe you're tired of having your seasonal banner up and there's no specific holiday coming up and you just want to change out your banner. We're going to be making banners for these on and off throughout the year. And I think that that is such a fun series. I think that it's just one that I can show you how easily you can make these and we can get creative together and we can make fun banners. So if you see these flag, no, I am not going to say flagpole. See, I'm getting stuck saying it because that's what the tag said. If you see these banner hangers in the garden section of your Dollar Tree, you might want to pick up a couple because if you're like me, I want to put one in my backyard and one in my front yard and have them change out. And so I'm going to be making two every time I make one. How fun is that? I can't wait to show you what I come up with today. I will be bringing to you two banners today. St. Patrick's Day one, but only it's not really going to be super St. Patrick's Day. It's going to have the green in it, but it's really going to have that rustic feel to it. And I will be showing you a Valentine's Day one, even though Valentine's Day just passed. This is one that you can make any time of year because the items at the Dollar Tree are readily available all the time, or at least I hope they are. So anyway, I'm gonna quit my gabbing. Let's jump into it, because today I've got two fun banners for you that I think you're absolutely gonna love to start this series off with. Let's get to crafting on a budget. Alrighty, so today we're gonna be doing a bit of DIYing using some of Dollar Tree's felt rolls. I'm not going to lie to you, this felt is a bit on the thinner side, but we're going to make it work and we're going to do that by folding the felt in half. Now you can see that this top edge here to the bottom measures out at 13 inches. Do not cut off that excess felt at the top. You want to leave that because we're going to need it. We're going to go ahead and take some hot glue and hot glue up the sides, putting those two pieces together. And this here is just going to make our felt a bit thicker and give it a bit more sturdiness. Is sturdiness a word? We're gonna make it a bit more sturdy. There we go, there's the proper English. Now taking this top edge, we're gonna fold it in half. That's what that extra fabric was for. But when you fold it in half, you wanna fold it over in a way that's gonna cover up that 13 inch top edge that we left. And then you're gonna wanna close up those sides. And while you're at it, go ahead and close up that bottom edge as well gluing it to the top edge of the bottom part of the felt. Whoa, that was kind of confusing, but you see what I'm doing. Now, because we're making a banner, we need to make kind of a slip pocket for our wire hanger. And so we're gonna fold over that top edge again in half, and we're going to just close up this bottom edge. You don't wanna close up the side edges because we wanna leave those open so that little wire piece has a little slip place to go into to hold our banner up. We're gonna add a bit of red to this, and so using my ruler and, yes, yes, Dollar Tree's rotary cutter, I love this thing, I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece that measures out at 11 and a half inches by 10 and 3 quarter inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and place this on the top the right side, not the sides that we folded over and glued everything, but on the front side of our banner, just like so, giving us just kind of that outline of the white just a bit. And 
Again, taking my hot glue because this is a no sew project, but if you want to sew this, you can do that too. I'm going to hot glue this piece down. So I gotta be honest, this is one of those times where what I thought I wanted to do at the top, I ended up not wanting to do. I was gonna originally add some burlap to the top, but then I decided to go in a different direction. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fold this over and hot glue it, framing out that red felt on the front perfectly on all four sides with the white felt. And honestly, I think I like adding this piece to the bottom of it anyway because it's going to add a bit more weight to this banner, which will hold it straighter when it's being hung outside. For this DIY, I will also be incorporating these new wood planks by Crafter Square that my Dollar Tree just got in, and I even got a couple in my subscriber mail. These measure out at 4.5 inches by 4.5 inches. I'm gonna give these a good coating of some Waverly white chalk paint. I also got that in my subscriber mail. You guys rock. The stuff that I could not find at my Dollar Tree or I wasn't able to get out to get. So many of you thought of me and sent me stuff and so I've got a lot of really great items that was sent to me in my subscriber mail that you will be seeing in some upcoming DIYs like this one. So like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and give all four of these a coat of this paint. Now, what is an alternative to these planks? There's not a lot of wood that you can buy that is this size, but you could always take one of Dollar Tree's plaques, and those are really easy to cut using a razor and cut a four by four, no, four and a half by four and a half inch square. Or you can use another piece of felt. You can cut felt squares out that are white if you wanted to. And so there are a couple of alternatives for those of you who don't get these planks at your Dollar Tree yet because Dollar Tree is widening their crafter square to all stores so you just got to be patient it'll get to yours I'm pretty sure of it. Once they're dry and I did put a couple of coats on these I'm going to place them evenly spaced on the front of this and you can see where I'm going with this. Once I've got them in place I'm just going to use some hot glue and I am going to be generous with that hot glue to adhere these planks on and oh my word I just did that I spilt some hot glue on that plank there and I haven't quite seen it yet but I think I see it right about now and I'm gonna remove this plank because yeah wiping it only smeared it so now I'm gonna try and scratch it off because <laughs> that's gonna bug me if I don't and you can see that there is a bit of a smudge there but it gets better I promise so I'm gonna continue on with gluing my planks down before I actually scratch that smudge off. Now I'm going to take some of Apple Barrel's black paint and this is a gloss. Wow, I don't know why I had gloss in my stash because I really don't like gloss. I am a total matte person, but I had it out for a reason. Using a really thin paintbrush, I'm going to put some stitch marks on these white planks that I made. Now, in all honesty, I'm not sure why I'm doing it with paint because I feel like typically I would have just gotten out my black Sharpie and done it and it would have been a lot quicker. But what I'm thinking is that I already had this out because I was in DIYing mode. When I film my creations or DIYing, I do batches. So I typically will be filming from sunup to sundown for a couple of days and I will knock out probably anywhere from five to ten DIYs in a couple of days and so I think that when everything is just out and I'm in that mode I don't want to get up and go look for something and so that's probably why I use the paint but if you have a sharp sharpie I would most definitely just pull that out because you're gonna be done in less than five minutes instead of taking 20 like it took me using the paint but this is an alternative if you don't have the sharpie you're gonna use your paintbrush and some black paint Look at how cool that looks. The stitching really just adds so much character to a DIY. It really finishes off those planks. I think before the stitching, the planks looked unfinished, but now they've got that nice stitched edge and it's really finishing them off. And then I felt like I needed to add more stitching to the felt to kind of tie it all in together. And so I am going to go around the red felt and add some black stitching. Now I will tell you that a Sharpie will not work for this part so you will need to use a paint. So 
I am going to rewind and take back what I said and maybe you can use the black sharpie for the white part but you're gonna have to pull out your black paint anyway so you might as well just take the 20 minutes and do it with the black paint I'm gonna switch things up a bit and this is a black cardstock this is a real base grade cardstock and using my Cricut I went ahead and cut out the letters L heart V E for this DIY now there are a couple different ways that you can do these letters you don't need a Cricut one way being you can go on to Google image search and you can search for block letters like I did block letter L and when you find one in a font that you like you can either one trace it on your screen just by simply putting a piece of copy paper up on your screen and very lightly tracing it with a pencil printing it out if you wanted to and tracing it that way or you can get this set in Linda's Etsy store. You can get the digital die cut for 50 cents or you can get the die cuts themselves sent to you for $2 with free shipping. You can find the link to Linda's Etsy store in the description box below. It really is your choice. There are different ways of doing this, but I felt like because the planks are four and a half by four and a half inches that they needed a bit of a bigger letter than that of what the Dollar Tree has available either on their poster stickers or wood lettering. And so taking some spray adhesive, I'm using this one by Scotch. Dollar Tree does have a new spray adhesive that seems a bit better than the last one that they used to carry. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this on the back side of my letters. Now when you're spraying this, you do wanna make sure that your letters are facing down on the back side. And I thought that this would be a fun theme or way of putting love onto this banner with these blocks. I've seen this type of theme before and I just thought that it would be really cute and work perfectly for this banner. Now because I did use a cardstock for this, I do want to seal this. If you're using a vinyl, you don't really have to seal it, but if it's going to be outside, I would seal it anyway. I'm using a Mod Podge to seal it. If you want to use Waverly's varnish, you can do that. It's a bit more expensive. To me, Mod Podge works just as good. You're just going to want to make sure that your letters are good and adhered on. And just by brushing on the Mod Podge, you shouldn't have any problems with your letters bubbling or wrinkling because we use the spray adhesive. Now I'm going to set this aside, let it dry for a couple hours, and our banner is done. And there is the banner on Dollar Tree's banner holder, what I'm calling a banner holder. I think that this is a fun DIY Valentine's Day banner. Now let's get moving onto a St. Patrick's Day one because St. Patrick's Day is the next holiday and we gotta have a banner for that. And yes, I did say St. Patrick's Day and I am holding an Easter truck plaque in my hand. We're gonna DIY this. And I'm gonna start off by removing the embellishment with one of Dollar Tree's paint scrapers. And how often does that happen where you remove it and there's no damage to the plaque? I am loving that. I'm also going to be using this fat quarter, this green and black fat quarter that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And you guessed it, I'm going to take some Mod Podge and just pour it onto my plaque because I feel like that's going to go faster. I don't know. I think I was being impatient. I'm not going to lie. I'm impatient. When I see something or I have a vision of what I want a DIY to be, I can hardly wait for the end of it because I want to see the outcome. And so we're definitely going to give this a good coating of Mod Podge. Then we're going to go ahead and put a piece of, you guessed it, the green and black fabric on the top of this. And we're going to give it a second coat of Mod Podge to seal that fabric on there and make it nice and stiff. Now it does take a couple of hours for your fabric and Mod Podge to dry. I personally like to stick mine in my oven on my craft cookie sheet at the lowest temperature that my oven will go, which is 135 degrees. And it's really just a bit hotter than the hottest day in the summer out here. Our summers get to be about 110. And so I feel like putting it in the oven at 135 degrees is safe and it takes maybe 20 minutes to dry versus a couple of hours. Once it's good and dry, I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife or my razor and I'm gonna use the plaque as a guide and I'm just gonna cut off that excess fabric. I needed some gray paint and guess what? 
I don't have any on hand, so I'm gonna make some with some white acrylic paint. This is Apple Barrels paint, and I'm gonna use my handy black gloss paint. See, this is coming in handy for something. Hopefully the gloss won't shine through because I'm using a matte white. So maybe it kind of cancels it out. I don't know. I'm gonna add just a touch of black to this to get the gray that I'm happy with. I don't wanna go too dark, I wanna go light because I'm gonna use this for the mirrors and the window on my truck. Now, I will tell you that before I started DIYing this plaque, I took a picture of the original plaque itself so I would have something to reference back to once I covered it with fabric just to get some of those minor details that are on the plaque and incorporate them into this one. And so using the gray paint, I'm gonna use that, like I said, for the windows. I feel like if you were to use white, it would just be too stark and it would stand out. And because I've got the dark fabric background, I feel like a light gray is perfect for that. Now when doing this, I am free handing it and I am looking at the picture on my phone as I do it. I've said it once and I will say it again, I do not have, I guess, the gift of painting as easily as Kayla does. Freehand painting is something that I have always been very intimidated by. It doesn't come as easily to me as it does to her, but I'm not gonna let that stop me because we're not looking for perfection. When something is rustic, it's not perfect. And so that's something that you have to keep in mind. And so I challenge you to challenge yourself and to step outside of your comfort zone and try new things because you really don't know how well you're gonna do with them until you actually do it. And I feel like the more I freehand paint, the better I get. And so I say that if I can do it, you can do it. So challenge yourself. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint this window. I'm also gonna add in the side mirrors as well. When I paint, I like to think of things in a way that is less intimidating. And what I mean by that is, so here I'm doing this side mirror and it's a backwards D. So when you think of it as a backwards D, it takes the pressure off of it because who can't do a backwards D? We all can. And so when you think of things in that aspect and you try to relate it to something else, it really does take a lot of the pressure off. For the fenders and the tires, I wanted to add more texture to this other than the fabric, and so I figured that black puffy paint would be perfect for this. And so, because I had this in my stash, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. If you don't have puffy paint in your stash, you could always pick up some of Dollar Tree's caulking, and you could mix it in with your black paint, and just like that, for $1.50, you've got yourself some puffy paint. Pretty cool hack, huh? I love that, it's so budget friendly. I tell you, when I run out of my puffy paint, that's the method I'm gonna be using. And I might even keep my bottles to add it to them because applying puffy paint in these bottles is so easy. But I'm not sure if the caulking is gonna make it too thick. We'll see. And with the white puffy paint, I'm gonna go in and add just a couple of highlights on the bumper just to give it some dimension and add a bit of detail to it. And I can't forget the bumper, and so I'm going to go in with my gray paint and add a bumper as well. And later on, you will see that I added kind of a tailgate bumper, I guess, if you will. And I did that using the paint, but I didn't film it, and I'm not quite sure why. But you'll see it there. It'll just kind of magically appear, and you'll be like, hey, there's a tailgate bumper there. I didn't see Kelly do that. Yeah, because I didn't film it. Sorry. Now let's get to this handy embellishment that we took off. The front side, we're not gonna do. We're gonna work on the back side because why do we wanna try and cover up that detailing when we don't need to? It's gonna be glued down to the plaque. So I'm gonna put some Mod Podge on the back side of this and there's really no need to put any felt or paint because this plaque is the same color as burlap and that's what I'm gonna use to cover this I pulled out some of my scraps you can see that this is a total scrap I do I keep my scraps because this is a good size and it's gonna work perfect for this DIY and so I'm gonna go ahead and place that on the plaque when you're trying to adhere burlap onto a plaque you want to be generous with the amount of Mod Podge that you're using because burlap is stiffer, it's thicker. And so it's not gonna stick as easily as fabric does, 
but really on the second coat when you go over the top of it if you just really kind of slap it on thick lather your burlap in Mod Podge it's gonna stick just fine and yeah you know the drill again taking our straight edge razor and you do want to use a cutting mat a no skid cutting mat you're gonna want to cut off the excess burlap using the plaque as a guide and it's pretty easy to do you just want to make sure you've got a nice fresh blade so it cuts right through that and stiffer burlap cuts so much easier with a razor than burlap that hasn't been stiffened if that makes any sense something about putting that mod podge on it just hardens it up and it makes it super easy to cut through i thought it'd be fun to add our last name with dollar tree's wood letters to the tailgate and so spelling out our last name and taking some of Waverly's Antique Wax, you know I'm going to incorporate that into a DIY. I'm going to give these wood letters a good coating of that. Oh my goodness, would you look at how pretty that looks. I love that dark brown wood color with the burlap. I will never get sick of this. I really won't. I love this. This screams me. I get so many people asking, Kelly, don't you get tired of using browns in a DIY? Why don't you incorporate some teal and some pink? I, I can't do it, guys. I, I just can't. I, I love brown way too much. I really do. And if I use teals and pinks, then I can't use it in my home. And then I have to make a second one. And that's just not cost effective. And so I just do it in browns so I can keep it up at my home. And I say, if you want to use teals and pinks, because that's what goes in your home, then I say, get creative and do it. If it works for you, perfect. And ha, I love that. Just look at how awesome that looks. Rustic, rustic, rustic. That's all I can say. Okay, let's get back to the DIY. We're going to take some hot glue and we're going to put this plaque right back where it was when it was an Easter plaque, but now it's not an Easter plaque anymore. Ha ha, I love that. Yeah, I bet when you guys saw this as an Easter plaque, you were like, wait, didn't she just say St. Patrick's Day? I did, but Dollar Tree has these Easter plaques out right now. So you gotta go grab one or grab two so you can DIY them. And again, using the felt from the Dollar Tree, I'm using the black and the white. I'm not gonna go through how I put it together. I'll just show you that the measurements for the white are, I believe, 14 inches for the white and 15 inches for the black. And again, just remember, you're gonna need to double up that felt and fold it in half and then leave a bit extra at the top to fold it over a couple times to make that opening to put the rod for our banner hanger in. And so now using just a stick or two of hot glue, I'm gonna go ahead and outline my truck and you really wanna make sure and outline it, not just put the glue in the center because you don't want your plaque to fall forward off of the felt. You want it to really be adhered to that felt so when it's hanging, it looks like it's one piece. And so I did make that mistake with the XOXO. I had just originally put it in the center of the plaques and they kind of hung forward from the weight. Here in the back window, you can see that I put the word lucky. Now you can do this again, one of two ways. If you have access to Dollar Tree's poster board letters, you can use these. They've got them in several different fonts, even fonts that I'm not showing here that would work perfectly for this. Or again, you can always head on over to Linda's store where you can get an instant digital download of these fonts and you're gonna receive six different fonts in that digital download. Or if you want the die cut sent to you, you have your choice of any of the six fonts and she will send them to you with free shipping. You can find the link to Linda's store in the description box below. Did I say that already? And so again, I went ahead and I used the cardstock and using the spray adhesive, I sprayed it on the back and adhered it onto this back window. And now I am going to again seal it with some Mod Podge just because this is gonna be outside and um, yeah, I want it sealed. And along with the letters, I'm gonna go ahead and seal the wood letters as well, just to kind of keep the dark brown color to them. And you can achieve that by sealing it. If it's outside, it, they tend to fade a bit and weather. And so I wanna keep my wood letters nice and brown. And so yeah, you can seal them with your Mod Podge or your Waverly varnish. You choose and would you look there how stinking cute is that this screams st patrick's day even though it doesn't i love these banners how quick and easy are these 
Well, well, look who's doing another voiceover on one of my DIYs. It's always fun to hear Kayla's take on me doing a DIY. So if you're in need of a good laugh, I'd head on over to her channel. You can find the link to her video in the description box below. Okay, seriously, how stinking cute is this? It was quick, it was easy, it was budget friendly, and I loved the outcome. And like I said before, I know Valentine's Day already passed, but I was so excited about this series that since it was just a few days ago, I figured, heck, I'm gonna go ahead and make one anyway because all the items that I need for it are not Valentine's Day decor pieces that the Dollar Tree carries. They're items that I can get at the Dollar Tree now, and so I wanted to go ahead and do it and get it ready for next year. And next year when Valentine's Day comes, I will make a second one for my second banner hanger that's in the backyard. But for now, I think that this is such a cute idea. I love that you can get this vinyl or cardstock in Linda's shop for a very budget-friendly cost. You're really not gonna pay any more than what you pay at the Dollar Tree, and you're getting free shipping. And if you have a Cricut, you're gonna pay even less, and you can download it and cut it out yourself. I am loving this one here. I think that this is a fun one to use for St. Patrick's Day. I didn't wanna add any clovers to it because I just wanted it to be something rustic, something that screamed me, and if I wanted to leave it out a little bit longer after St. Patrick's Day, I didn't wanna feel like I had to take it down. And so I think just by incorporating Lucky into it you get the idea for what it's for but I think that these are such fun little pieces and I really enjoyed doing them and I can't wait to bring you more of these if you all like this series make sure to leave me a comment in the comments below and let me know what you think of it because I go off of your feedback so please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to you guessed it 5,000 likes because like I always say each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you do leave down below they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy, but most of all, stay positive please and bye for now everybody.